So, welcome back, everybody. If you're watching, to the next part of Danganronpa. Uh, just a very small recap, because I know a lot of you guys have been keeping up with the streams and watching it. And if you guys don't know, um, there is a recap right here. So you guys can go back and watch any of our other parts with chat integration. So, Jihiro Fujisaki, she was brutally murdered. Uh, we don't know who. At the same time, we've investigated and we were looking into the Genocide Jack case. Um, which is a Genocide Jack is a murderer that kills, uh, has killed many people. But a lot of the details of the case have been surrounded in secrecy. So, did Genocide Jack, is, is Genocide Jack actually one of us? Did Genocide Jack actually do this case? Or is it somebody trying to pretend or or mimic uh, the ways of Genocide Jack? And if so, which of the characters is actually the ultimate murderous fiend? Which of them's ultimate is truly the ultimate murderous fiend? And did they kill Chihiro? Right now, all that matters is, no matter what, Everything aside, we have to find out who killed Chihiro. Not only to sleep better at night, because she was a pure innocent angel who would have killed somebody like her, but uh, if we fail to find Chihiro's murder and we, we pick the wrong killer, then all of us get sentenced to death and we all die right here. Without further ado, order in the court. Let's see what Monokuma's gotta say. Actually, let me set my skills, bro. Trials start. Buckle up. Get 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 some fucking popcorn. Get ready because this is gonna be insane. This is gonna be like a crazy movie. These next two hours will be absolutely fucking insane. Whatever you think is gonna happen, you have no idea. So get comfortable. Get your pajamas on. Welcome to the Milky Finishers Play Danganronpa. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But. If you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Oh boy. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. All right, chat. What was the murder weapon? First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. What was it that actually killed Chihiro? Yeah! Whoop. It sounds like the the voices are low. Am I going crazy? I bet it was an iron pipe. I think it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Taco is just whispering. Poor Chihiro. No, the weapon that was used to kill Chihiro must have been in the locker room. We have to find out who's saying a contradiction here. It was a head wound. That's that we know that. She was hit in the head, and that's what killed her. It was not an iron pipe. It was the dumbbell on the floor. Get out of here with that shit. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? I will turn it up for you guys a little bit. That should be good. That should help a little bit. There. It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. Exactly. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. Oh, that's fucked up. Ah, I didn't remember that part. So, Kyoko found out that the, the shape uh, in Chihiro's skull matched the shape of the dumbbell, which is really fucked. As far as I'm concerned... There's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. Okay. You looked at her head wound? I mean, of course, dude. Yes! How's that creep? So Kyoko's out here doing the shit that she should be doing. You guys are the ones not fucking looking at her head. You gotta analyze the victim to know what the fuck happened. If you don't mind, 
I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Okay. All right, Biakia. Biakia has seemed pretty diligent about this case so far. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Oh. Is it Biakia? What? For real? Shahiro's killer is. Uh oh. Does Biakia already know who the killer is? The fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. He's said that already. He's said it already. He's he's known. Uh, he's told us that he thinks that it's Genocide Jack because of all the evidence. We'll see. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element is bad at non-stop debates. Here we go. This is good shit, dude. The culprit is genocide, Jack. I'm sure. Case closed. As far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. The the trial just started. The trial just started. We. All that we've done so far is determine that the dumbbell was the murder weapon, and Biaki is saying that he's like, Genocide Jack is the killer. Genocide Jack's the one that's the killer. I don't know who that is. That's all you missed. The evidence that shows that Genocide Jack is related to the case. Well, we have the Genocide Jack case. How would it be impossible, Hina? What makes it impossible? No proof? What about the Genocide Jack case file? <sighs> we gotta say about that. I might know one reason he could be involved. Okay. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The lie of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, we're not getting into all that. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in I mean, that's, detail. that's a good, like, how do you argue against that, Chet? When, when the killer killed them hung them up in the way that Genocide Jack does. That information was never made public. How could somebody do a copycat killing in the same exact way if they weren't actually Genocide Jack, you know? Kind of made, like, he's got a good point. Like, only the real Genocide Jack would know that they kill and string up the body in that same exact cross-like pose. That makes sense. That makes sense. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. There's two characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. And that's the one that everybody knows. At the scene of every murder, Genocide Jack writes bloodlust somewhere on the wall in the victim's own blood. The second one, however, is not well known. That's right. Booblust. Hifumi, police. Uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. Shake my head. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made, made public. public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Yeah, Shin, he's a real dumbass. I hate him. Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case is that how the victim is positioned. I got it! I got it. I love Makoto, dude. He's crazy. In genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the, the higher ups in the police department. department. Interesting. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high level police officials were aware of it? Hmm. There's only one logical answer I You guys ready for Biaki to fucking blow your mind? I remember oh man, in this case, 
He's the real Genocide Jack. The culprit is the real Genocide Jack. Is it possible? How is it? How could one of us be the ultimate murderer? That doesn't make sense. No fucking way. Or is it? Is it possible? You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Not me. Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Oh! <laughs> Just pff, what up? Genocide Jack's true identity. Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. <laughs> Just pff, right at the beginning. Yeah, pff, fuck it. What kind of serial killer could be afraid of blood? Is Toko genocide Jack? The answer is yes, yes and, and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gonna be so complicated? It does seem like a riddle in a way, but I feel like I can just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but isn't Toko? What does that mean? Hangman's Gambit. What word describes somebody who could both be somebody and not somebody? Gotta, gotta do Hangman. Hangman chat, help! Fuck, fuck, fuck. Run out of time here, run out of time. What, what word would describe... Oh fuck, oh fuck. That wouldn't fit, Marco, that wouldn't fit! Aha, Harper! Schizo. Indeed, indeed. Like a schizophrenic. Now I understand. Now I understand. <laughs> Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Hmm. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Disassociative Identity Disorder. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. But still, go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... That's what Makoto was okay. saying. Acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. Wow. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Hmm. I got it. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? Okay. That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Shihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. Oh man, chat. Just wait. Oh fuck, oh man. Remember, you guys remember that? She hit her head and she woke up like a big tongue hanging out, idiot. Yeah. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. She sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. So when she sees blood, her personality completely changes into a different person. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. What do you have to say about this, Toko? Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, Welcome back, dude. Welcome Shihiro's back. Personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> mm, are you gonna deny it, Toko? When Toko trapped herself in her room. It's, it's because, because she was scared, scared of Genocide, Genocide Jack. Jack. You guys remember when she locked herself in the room and said she was scared of Genocide Jack? It wasn't because she was scared of Genocide Jack coming in. She was scared of Genocide Jack getting out. Ha! I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out the killer. Drive out the murderous fiend. The reason 
she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. Hmm. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. Oh shit, Byakuya dude, he knew it! Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. That's fucked up. Killing even more people. Imagine if you had a split personality that, that was like a murderer. And you, you couldn't do anything about it. I do believe you misunderstood her. Huh. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No, what she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Oh shit. Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave <sighs> Oh his shit, shit. Her, what the fuck? had a strange conversation. She told me a most oh, interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend. She she literally she told Byakuya all this. She admitted it. She came to him and said, "Hey, Monokuma's gonna tell everybody what's on my, my secret." Uh, and she just told she just told him. She confessed to Byakuya. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> But he, Byakuya promised not to tell anybody. She's like, Byakuya, please don't tell anybody. Please. Because she has a crush on him. And instead, what does he do? Instead of keeping her secret, right at the trial, he walks out. He's like, yeah, there's Genocide Jack, guys. Here's everything. She told me this and that. And she's like, what? This is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said she wouldn't tell anyone. Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh. You promised. I can't believe you lied. You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. Uh oh, SpaghettiO! This betrayal, bro. World. Not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Oh fuck. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. Ah. But in spite of that promise. Damn. She said, hey, I won't. I'm, she, she said this in the flashback. You guys, remember the last stream? She said, I couldn't keep our promise. Don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's kind of fucked. That's kind of fucked, dude. I mean, whatever it is, I'll see. If, you, if I kept my promise, you'd go out with me. That's the only reason I promise. Ooh. That's How not good, Chief. do I have to tell you? I never said that. <laughs> you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing. Could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. He is, Harper. He's a smart guy. He's a dangerous guy, dude. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. Nani? All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly? The person? Oh, fuck off. Here we go. Buckle up. You don't we don't need to be questioning Toko Fukawa. Who we need to be questioning is Genocide Jack. Toko's body suddenly lunged backward. A huge thud echoed across the room, but in the next second... Genocide Jill! Nani! Oh shit! <laughs> the ult the ultimate murderous fiend is in the room. Oh. <laughs> there was a secret person hiding among them all along. The ultimate murderous fiend inside the consciousness of Toko Fukawa, the ultimate writer. It's not over yet. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front 
in a vacuum. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and blue <laughs> lives another that shines as bright as This is the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. This is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? It's, it's fucked, so they're all sitting there. This person has literally killed so many people. This is an actual serial killer. What's up? That kills for fun. Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. There we go. Remember when everybody thought that Monokuma... Might, they're like, what if Genocide Jack is the one doing this entire thing? Psych, no. Monokuma actually captured the murderer and put them with the rest of the kids. Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Nani. It's not true? Of course it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? That creepazoid. Wow. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again. <laughs> oh fuck. The murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. Boom! Case closed. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. Yeah, don't don't say anything, Harper. You can feel free to DM. I'm gonna whisper if you want. A motive. A motive. Remember what Monokuma told us. What was the motive? Ah! That's that's a pretty good motive, Chet. Monokuma had the files about everybody's dark secrets. Makoto's was that he pissed the bed, who cares? But, if Toko's was that she is also Genocide Jack, Genocide Jack would not want that information to be revealed to everybody. Therefore, having to kill someone to keep Monokuma silent. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's all coming together. have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Nani. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you said. Maybe, maybe she's totally right about that, but, but something's still bothering me. What she said. I'm going to get some more details about all of this. Let's go! Could it be possible that Genocide Jack, even though she exists and has murdered many, is still not the culprit behind Chihiro Fujisaki's death? Is that even possible? Oh, I missed! I missed my shot! Oh, fuck, oh, shit. Give it up. You killed her. Is Genocide Jack really the killer? I feel like something doesn't match up. Moment there, Byakuya. Not everything is similar. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not 
so sure. Not so that. sure. I think there's a slight difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. Okay. Well, how is it any different? Conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Oh shit! Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee, dude, no! I love Chef. Way that makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the genocide jack cases and this one. The style of the bloody missions, the victim's fatal injury. For one, the cause of death is different. In the genocide jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. All the victims killed the same way in every single genocide jack case. To the case file, and they were all killed with a pair of scissors, not a dumbbell. But well, wait, chat, time out, time out. They were killed with scissors and not a dumbbell. And I remember somebody in the chat brought that up in the last stream. They were like, well, that's because when they're locked in the school, they don't have scissors readily available. They can't, they can't just kill. Uh, which is why Chihiro had to be tied up with an extension cord and not a rope. So that makes sense. That still makes sense. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? They, sometimes you have to make do with what you have uh, because of the situation. They're in a locked in the school. Yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? True. And there's more. One more conflicting detail. One more conflicting detail, Chet. Ugh, she's crazy. This is wild. So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? The second difference is related to how the body was suspended. What was used? Not an extension cord, but it was supposed to be the scissors. Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They use some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrist. Oh shit! What is your point? Shut up, Celeste, what do you know? Well, in all the previous genocide jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor sharp scissors. There's a lot of twists to come, chat. Big Mac. That's what she calls Makoto. Big Mac. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? <laughs> What's the pattern, Chet? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as dead. Why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Little lolly girl. Let's see. There's a pattern surrounding the genocide jack victims, and Chihiro doesn't fit. I think I figured it out. The reason she could not have killed Chihiro is because Chihiro was a girl. Genocide Jack only kills men. Genocide Jack only kills men, Chet. There's another thing wrong. Haha! <laughs> She's crazy. What are you talking in about? all the genocide jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken Harada, Tahiro Honda, Takeshi. 
All of them. Every single murder, not one female. They were all guys? Indeed. The hell's wrong with you? She's nuts. So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man. <laughs> Fucking Taka. The way he says that. That's true, I mean, hey, I, even a serial killer, even a serial killer might abandon their methods if, uh, whoops, oh fuck, wait, <laughs> I actually, ha I hit on auto for a second, my bad there, I hit auto button. Uh, I would never kill uh, for a reason as petty as mere survival. So, she's saying that even threatened, she would never break from her style of killing just to survive, which I don't know if you believe that. That's up to the person. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect. That's true. Thank you so much for the follow, 64 Diamonds. Welcome to the Milky Finishers. Welcome to Dongan Rampa. Feel free to have a good time. There's no no spoilers or backseating, but you can still talk about your favorite characters or cases or games. Uh, but anyways. That does make sense, though. If she was going to kill sur for survival, why would she have marked it as a genocide jack case? Why would she write bloodlust and kill the victim in her way? That would just be like, hey, it's me. That's it, it, there's, a, there's a couple weird things that here. does make some amount of sense. I mean, if you don't have your scissors, you gotta use what you gotta use. Maybe you See? Use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Finally, he fooled me making some sense around here. Any scissors? Don't just use any scissors. I only use She's pissed. Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Nani. She fucking has a bunch of them on her! So she could have used the scissors if she wanted. She's a shit ton. Yes. Thank you so much for the follow, 64 Diamonds. And if anybody wants to join the Discord, we, we, we talk about Danganronpa all the time in the anime section of our Discord. So join our Discord, go over to the anime section, talk about Danganronpa as much as you want. Just use spoiler tags when necessary, that's all. Nani? You can't, can you? Ah, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's like, Taka's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. We just revealed that the ultimate murderous fiend is amongst us, and she's trying to tell us that she didn't do this? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody yeah. The police knew about that. So what the fuck? Going back to that, that still makes sense. Chet, listen. If Let's just pretend for just a moment. Let's just pretend that it was not Genocide Jack. Let's just all just, playing devil's advocate, pretend that Genocide Jack had nothing to do with this. That doesn't fucking explain how the body was tied up in a way that only the real Genocide Jack would know. That doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Yeah. That's why we figured it had to or be does a real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Hold on. There is one person who did know the information as well. 
One person who could have copied the genocide jet cases. Who else knew, Chet? Who else knew about the real way genocide jet kills? Other than Byakuya Togami himself, the one that told us, the one that had access to the undercover police files. Yo, thanks for using brain power. Uh, I'm not gonna play it though. <laughs> I'll play it next time. You get one free brain power in the future. <laughs> I can play it at the end, I guess. You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents. I'm sorry. I I meant to turn it off, but this is a story-driven experience. I can't I can't play the song over this. There's a lot of people that watch this LP. We got some points, man. I mean, yeah, like, it, it kind of makes sense. From the beginning, he was like, it's Genocide Jack, it's Genocide Jack, I have all this information. What if he's just doing that to lure everybody off of his, like, trail? What if he's just doing that to lure everybody off of the trail? So even though the real Genocide Jack is here, Byakuya purposely tried to make it look like a fake Genocide, or a real Genocide Jack killing when it was a fake one. Not so smart are you, Byakuya? What's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed, wouldn't you agree? Thank you, Yoshika. So, appreciate you. You can still talk about like your favorite characters or favorite cases or favorite game. Seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. Very suspicious thing to say, Byakuya. I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. But how would you have known that who the victim was before entering the room? There is something very strange. Okay then. What's so strange? I have not played V3. I don't know anything about V3. Um, that is a phone call that I can't take right now, unfortunately. Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. I gotta mute that. Sorry. Sorry, I can't take that phone call right now. We're in the middle of a trial. There was a clear contradiction in what Biakia just said. I already said it. We already know. He said, well, I only suggested that we go to the girls' locker room because Chihiro was the victim. But how do you know who the victim is without going in the room first? You fucked up. Before we found the body. Shut up, Ifumi. Don't say anything, Harper. It's fine. Oh, shit. Wait a second, Biakia. Quiet down, quiet down. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, 
We couldn't have known who the victim was. Common sense. Common sense. We'll see. We'll see. First, because Chihiro was the victim, doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer. I must admit, he doesn't. He seems pretty calm and collected, Chad. That's not good. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? Nani? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Hmm. Show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. Indeed. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh shit. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences... I just got an alert on my computer. Uh, the differences between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be, Chet? The evidence that proves that Byakuya is responsible. Mmm, shit! What's so weird about the rope? We talked about this earlier. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? Yeah. I've never seen that rope before in my life. Nani, what about the extension cord for the lamp they used to read? Actually, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure you have seen, seen the rope before, Byakuya. Because you see that rope, or should I say... Extension cord? Extension cord? Yucky, you've used the extension cord in, in the library time. more than once? Remember what he was saying earlier? He that he, he couldn't he couldn't light up the lamp because the plug wouldn't reach the outlet. So he needed that extension cord from the library archive in order to plug it in. Then when it goes missing, it suddenly miraculously shows up on Chihiro's body. I call a little bit bullshit. Was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. Oh shit! And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Yakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think. Then your conclusion is something like this. Hey, what's up, Hug Me? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Milky Finishers. Play Danganronpa. Super nice to have you here. Uh, I, all I ask is that no spoilers are backseating. We can still talk about how much you love the characters or the game or your favorite case. Just no details. That's all I ask. And uh, feel free to join our Discord or watch the rest of our playthrough by doing exclamation point uh, recap. I, killed Chihiro in I appreciate you being here. Then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. Intentionally made it, it look like, like genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? Oh. Why would Byakuya be acting so calm? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Why is he acting this way, Chet? Why do you think Byaki is acting this way? Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a 
He said that he had no problem killing people from the beginning. Still. There's something that's still bothering me. What's still weird? What has not been addressed yet, chat? So far, I think we did a lot. At first, at first we thought it was Genocide Jack, because we were like, oh shit, Toko is Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack shows up and like, yep, I've killed a lot of people. Uh they were like, oh well fuck, we found the killer. Easy, done, closed case. Genocide Jack says, no, it was not me. Here's all the reasons why it wasn't me. Then everybody's like, wait a fucking second. Yeah, wait it. All the evidence is pointing towards Byakuya. Because he knew shit that Genocide Jack didn't know. But what has still not been addressed? Yes, Harper, indeed. We have not talked about the fucking weird posters and rugs switching between the locker rooms. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Is that a confession? Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of Gen which would be a good... But Byaku is even smarter than that. He's even smarter. Or is he? What about all that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something is not right. Byaku has remarks just now. There's something in there that concerns me. I got it. You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it, Isn't possible, it possible that the, the murder, murder took, took place, place somewhere, somewhere else? else? Where else could the murder have taken place? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later. Hmm. Along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? We'll see. That was awfully specific. specific. Please, Please tell me of a reason. reason well, we have that. some reasoning to believe that the, the, the scene of the murder did not actually take place in the girls' locker room because the posters, anything that got blood on it was switched. Because remember, Sakura spilled the coffee in the girls' locker room. That coffee stain ended up being on the rug in the boys' locker room. And vice versa, the posters were also switched. The, the, the big titty anime girl was in the girls' locker room and the boy band was in, poster was in the boy band locker room being switched. I believe I do. Yaki, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who'd see, been so confident up until now, maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have taken place somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else... Let's, let's see, see the, the proof. proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. I just need to focus on the things that got switched. Oh, I need the posters. Just on the things that got switched. Oh, here we go. I got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... The poster, the poster hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? Hmm. The poster in the girls' locker room was... A picture of a big boob supermodel. Nani? But don't you think that's kind of strange? <laughs> Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> meanwhile... <laughs> he just ignored her! He just like, meanwhile, just completely ignoring Genocide Jack. A poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Tornado, dude. The super popular boy band? 
That doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? Hmm. And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? The carpet with the coffee stain, Chet. The carpet with the coffee stain. Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. So the stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. Chat right now, I want to ask you guys. I want to ask you guys right now. Press one in the chat if you think you know who the killer is, and two in the chat if you have no idea. Press one in the chat if you're pretty sure you know who the killer is, and press two in chat if you have no idea. Just one or two, that's it. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpet was switched too? Interesting. But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's, it's certainly, certainly plausible, don't you think? Don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely to swap, swap the scene, scene of the crime. crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why did the culture bother doing that? Yeah. Huh? I mean, that, Celeste brings up a good point. Like, why the fuck does that matter at the end of the day? So, who gives a shit? If, if somebody was uh, else was killed in the other locker room... Why would they go through all of the work to move all of the shit and the body into a different locker room? What the fuck's the point? What, well, how does that change anything or help the killer's identity in any way? You know what I mean? How does that help the killer in any way? Where, why does it matter if they found a dead body in one room or another room? At the end of the day, they found a dead body. They, they, they did all this shit, put bloodlust on the wall, genocide Jack trying to make it look like it was genocide Jack. It's still like, there's, there's where's the point? Celeste, I mean, she brings up a good point. If the murder did play, take place in the boys' locker room, how would Chihiro have gotten in there in the first place? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Makoto's like, ah, oh, fuck. You have to swipe the E handbook across the card reader device. But Chet, is there any other way to get in? Is there any other way to get in? But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. Also, she had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. Okay. I highly doubt that. Yeah, I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. It's good, Dax P. Welcome to the stream, big dude. Welcome to the stream. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? But why? Why? How? There's just a lot of things weird. Oh shit, here we go! Make your argument. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room? Oh? Ah, I got it! She must have packed her e handbook. She's the ultimate programmer, she could have hacked it. Is that what happened? Oh shit. Theoretically, if Chihiro was able to use Leon's handbook, she could have gotten into the boys' locker room. That's true. She, if she would have gone through the loophole, she could have used Leon's handbook to get into uh, the, the, the boys' locker room. But, if, but that's if she was able to use it. What's the problem with that, chat? We already inspected Leon's handbook. It's the only one of the three that won't turn on. It's broken. So that's bullshit. 
protect her e handbook. She was the ultimate program after all. This music is bumping, chat. No, that's wrong! Oh, this game is sick, dude. This game is sick. We're getting one step closer to the mystery. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Okay. Why not? Because it was broken, dumbass! Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? Good I'm question, Marco. Good question. Regulation against using someone else's handbook? Is there? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. Ah! We, we've, all, we've long discovered this, though. We, we, we've long discovered this part. Yep, yep, yep. Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then. She must have hacked you, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security... Oh shit, so once... If Monokuma says something, it's as good as law. He has no reason to lie. So he's, if Monokuma says that it's impossible, it's, it's impossible. There's no way that Chihiro hacked it. Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just wrong. Is Makoto wrong, Chet? It seems like there's no way she, she could have gotten, gotten in the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Hmm. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. All right, Chet. Vote for Byakuya as the killer. Or do we? Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya was the only one who did it, really. But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. Oh. Kyoko hasn't talked in a while, chat. Kyoko hasn't talked in a while. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What do you gotta say, Kyoko? What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? Yeah, she hasn't. She's been silent for a while. There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So. Unless Kyoko knows something that we don't, chat. We don't even know what her ultimate ability is. What does she know? Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's You're still one other, other way, way she, she could have gained out. access. What? What? What are you talking about? What other, what other way, way is there? Well, to explain that. Why don't we take a little break from the trial? Oh. I'd like you all to come see something. Oh, field trip! Field trip! Let's go! Wait, wait, wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Shut up, Monokuma. We're going on a field trip. Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. Oh, I'm sure man. Will you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Oh. Well, all right then. Where are we going to go that's going to make shit more exciting? Chat. For real? Ooh. Now then, what is it you want to show Is the audio good? Like the game audio, guys? So you can hear it? So, shall we go? Sweet! Glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... The scene of the crime? The girls' locker room? Nani? this place top to bottom. What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. <laughs> I'm just glad you're enjoying the stream, 64 Diamonds. I like to stream this game for people who've never seen it before. Uh, and then, uh, have a good time, so. It's her carefully, like a 
like using our hands? Don't let this fat bastard touch my pure princess. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. Okay. Dirty weeb. It's not the I hate it, Fumi, because he gives people like me a bad name. Just because I'm like a, a, a filthy anime lover. People, people think I'm like it, Fumi. That's not the case. Very well. I'll do it. Sakura will do it. You're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. This kind of goes with my thing. If I was dead. And then, I know, I'm not saying, I'm saying I'm in the minority, so don't, don't worry, guys. I'm not saying that this should be the standard. But, like, for me, once I'm dead, I'm dead. I don't care. I don't care who the fuck's grabbing me, slapping me around, put me in the back of a truck with the fucking Weekend at Bernie's shit. Once I'm dead, I don't care. You know, I don't want people doing weird shit to me while I'm alive, but a lot of people get really weird about that. They're like, make sure you, you, you have a closed casket or make sure my body is, is in a nice comfy coffin. I don't give a fuck. If I'm dead, I'm dead. Rip me over the side of the fucking San Francisco bridge. Let me float in there. Fucking tie me up to a kite and I'll be floating and go over to Grand Canyon. Draw a fucking penis on my face. I don't care, dude. Who gives a shit? That's just me. That's just me. That's just me. I don't care. Once I'm dead, I'm dead. I always... What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? Oh, shit. Stop screwing around. That's that's not a good joke. It's necrophilia. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quickly examine the body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... It, what is this... Nani? What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... This girl is... Is what? Is a boy! NANI! <laughs> yeah! Oh shit! Chihiro Fujisaki is a boy. Oh shit, son! Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, chat blew the fuck up. Chat blew the fuck up, bro. Chat blew up, bro. What? You're joking, right? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. I wouldn't this. joke about this. <laughs> then... Oh shit! Oh what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. Monokuma knew the whole time. The whole time. Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. He was a cross dresser. Genocide Jack didn't even know, bro. Genocide Jack didn't even know, cause Genocide Jack's like. I don't kill girls, I only kill boys. And she's like, well, fuck, I, I, that's a cute boy. I wish I would have killed him. Shit. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Inch wow, Kyoko, and Kyoko knew this the whole time, which is why she stayed quiet. She just sat there, let everybody talk, everybody argue, and then once it got to a dead end, she was like, hey, guys, by the way, uh, you guys are getting stumped on how Chihiro was uh, murdering the boys' locker room. That's why she didn't want to work out or, or go swimming with any of the girls. Remember at the beginning when all the girls were like, Come on, Chihiro, just, just go swimming with us. And she's like, No, no, I'm not, I'm not really up for it. That's also why 
she would have broken the curfew. Remember, Chet, she went out after 10 p.m., which was against the rules. That is why she went out after curfew to exercise so that nobody would see her or him go into the locker room so that nobody would know the truth. But Harper, who is the killer? Don't say. Don't say. But we still have to uncover who is the killer, Chet. Because if we don't, all of us die. And all of this is meaningless. That's still the golden ticket right there. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back, back to the court. Let's get back to the trial. the trial. That's what we're doing. Let's, let's now, now we have all the information. It wasn't Genocide Jack. Keeping you waiting. Was it? Then, was it still Biaki? How could it have been Biaki? Biaki didn't even know. Or did he? We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Oh shit. Yes, well. That's a good point, really Duck. That's a good point. But the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. The thought never even crossed my mind. Hey, all I'm gonna say about that matter is that does not bother me one iota. Chihiro's cute. Boy or girl, that's not a that's not an issue for Zach Lolliot. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his hand Don't say anything. did in Don't say anything. list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. Hey, I all hey, all I'm gonna say, Chet, is if if somebody came up to me and said, yo, who would you rather have be you ha uh, who would you rather have as uh, uh oh my god, I can't talk. <clears throat> who would you rather have as a significant other. That's a hard sentence to say. Um, between Sakura and Chihiro? Bro, I mean, sign me up for Chihiro. I'm just, I mean, that's, that's no disrespect to Sakura. That's just not really my type. Male, female, uh, too, too muscular. You know? Dude, too, too much. Too much Jonathan Joestar in around here, and I can't, can't be having that shit. So then. There should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room and was then later. So that is why all the pictures and stuff were changed. So Chihiro, he was actually originally killed in the boys' locker room, but then somebody didn't want to reveal that secret and then moved it to the girls' locker room, so that makes sense. And the killer could have easily hey. used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. If if you if you like uh Sakura, that's fine. I don't give a shit, dude. More for you. There's no disrespect to anybody. Hey, I don't care if somebody wants to fuck you fool me. Whatever you like, you like. I'm just saying what your boy Zach Lolly would do. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but Yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. Piakia didn't even know, dude. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? It's true. The suspicion's very still kind of on Biakia. Interesting. This has become very interesting, interesting indeed. Ah, in little world. I need some more. This is not sponsored, by the way. I just like to show it off. I'm drinking vitamin water fire, dude. It's spicy vitamin water. It's fucking banging. What about Keep my you? brain going while I'm playing this game. After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think 
he might not actually be the killer after all. What are you saying, Makoto? So, you think that Byakuya is not the one that killed Chihiro, but you still think that he's the one that made it look like it was Genocide Jack? Why the fuck? What? But yeah. Aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. Why is he so laid back, Chet? The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. All right, Harper. It sounds like a good plan to me, dude. Thanks Don't for watching, man. Might be because he doesn't have anything to do with him. <laughs> Yoshi. And like I said, guys, join our Discord server. Go to the anime section, and and we talk about Danganronpa all the time. There's so much to talk about. All I ask is that you please use spoiler tags when talking about things that are beyond where our playthroughs at. Okay. Plus, and even that. The evidence he left behind was a little too. How can I put it? Over. He consciously chose to use the extension cord. Yeah, see? Byaki is smarter than that. Why would he use the extension cord? He knew that was an obvious thing that would point him as the killer. That's how I see it. So he was actually doing things to lead us to believe. But why? But why? When you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when he found out Chihiro was actually a guy. True. If you really were the killer, that, that stuff, stuff would not have had any effect, had any on, effect you. on you. When you guys realize, man, fuck. So okay, that's we'll see. Thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. Okay. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's life. Look at this, motherfucker, dude! Look at this! So, he's like, yeah, I didn't kill, uh, Chihiro. When I stumbled upon the body, uh, I just decided to start fucking with it. What the fuck?! So, he, he's like, I didn't, I didn't kill Chihiro, but when I saw him, I just decided to fuck with it and make it look like Genocide Jack. Are you fucking with us right now? <laughs> that's so stupid. He's like, you fucking with us. He's like, I'm not effing with you. <laughs> Dude, that's actually funny. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. Damn. If you're really telling the truth, then... Why? Why did you do that to Chihiro's body? Tell us, Byakuya. My reasons hardly matter. Damn, getting cocked. He's like, don't worry about that. All we have to do is find the killer. Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. You're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. Oh shit! No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever... Bro, now my dad wants to know what Donald Trump is. Tell him to watch the Milky Finishers, dude. Tell him to get on, type exclamation point recap, catch up, and then hit us up uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday when we continue. Because we're going to stream more tomorrow or Wednesday. Because of the law, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? <laughs> of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway... Let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? Damn. And who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. Uh, the killer's a guy. That So that narrows it down, Chet. Look at that. Because if Chihiro was killed in the boys' locker room, and we already proved that uh, Leon's handbook was broken, the only person who could have gotten in there is a guy. There is no way that a female would have been able to sneak into the boys' locker room without being gunned down. So that narrows it down a lot. So who is it now that we know it's a guy? It still could be Byakuya, though. Killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. 
But that's not enough. I need to find some more clues. Ah, I love this! I love the trials, dude! <laughs> Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is it's new info. It's over. It's all over. I fucking hate you here. The victim? The killer. And only the killer. And it's not like they're just gonna turn themselves in. Game over, man. Game over. Not only do we have no new info on the killer, but nobody even saw the victim before he died. But is that actually true? No, we haven't brought up what Celeste told us. Remember the Celeste story about seeing Chihiro before he passed away? I ate the wrong- that was the wrong thing. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? You didn't sleep? Damn. You're living the true despair lifestyle. We gotta focus, we gotta focus. Focus, 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 check. We gotta solve this murder. Which one of these people killed Chihiro? Boy or girl? Still a precious innocent. Still somebody innocent. It's over. It's all over. You wanna know who saw the victim? The killer. No, that's wrong. Yeah, the no going out past 10 p.m. rule is not a Monokuma rule. It's it's a rule that they, they all kind of agreed on, but they haven't been listening to it. What do you think, Celeste? There was some other person who was also out after 10 p.m. She's the all, She only told Makoto this story. Celeste is such like a bitch. Whatever. Just hurry up and tell us. Just tell us. It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him. Oh shit! I saw him stuffing. And remember, Chet. Remember, Celeste has. Celeste remembers Chihiro holding a bag with a tracksuit and stuff in it. Yet when they found the body. The tracksuit and the bag were nowhere to be found. Where did the bag and the tracksuit go? Where did the bag and the tracksuit go? And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. That's true, so those things are unaccounted for. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of mm. any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. What did Chihiro say? I better get going, I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone was waiting for him. So Chihiro went uh, to work out with somebody. Quiet, Che. Quiet, quiet, quiet. We still gotta find the proof. We gotta find the proof. Now we know why. You find out the secret. You wouldn't be allowed to go in the girl's locker. Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Somebody that he trusted. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. He was willing to risk his secret being revealed. 
So Chihiro already told somebody here that he was a boy. Somebody that he trusted. The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Do we? Huh? You know who the killer is. You know who the killer is. Seriously? Chet, we know who the killer is. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Oh man. Boy, you want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment today, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe. But we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste, did you notice, did you notice special anything special, special about the bag or the jacket? The bag was just a just normal a duffel bag from the warehouse. Bag from the warehouse. Okay. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what could make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of traps to choose from. Okay. Do you think there might be some connection between the, the culprit, culprit and Chihiro's and jacket? jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Okay. Does so Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow it's really hard to believe. Yeah, this song's bumping! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go, chat! I gotta turn the lights on for this shit. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. Do we? The killer's gonna be revealed. Who killed Chihiro? We need revenge. Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I don't even have a tracksuit. This exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really Uh, like 15 minutes, Epic Man. 20 max, I think. No way. Not a chance. What did he say without even realizing it? Chet, Chet, what was just said right now? That was a big fuck up. Something exactly. Let, let me let me point this out. Look at what happened. Watch. He's saying something's off about what someone just said. Somebody just fucked up in that conversation. Listen, listen, Chet, listen. Get fucking ready. The killer just fucked up right now. The killer just fucked up live on Twitch. I got it. He picked that tracksuit because who fucked up? the one the culprit was wearing. Who fucked up? So what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit. Nobody said it was blue, bro. Nobody said it was blue, bro. Nobody said it was blue, bro. You did. You just did. Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Hold up there, Chief! What the fuck? What'd I say? what I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago... She, she said, said... Listen, Chet. This is a crazy fucking courtroom. Order in the court. Order in the fucking court! I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. Then I assumed he had off to exercise. Never in Celeste's thing did she ever say the jacket's fucking color. So why did you say... Why did you say it was a blue track suit? Oh no! Oh, say it ain't so, big chief. What are you? You just. Hey, Celeste. What color what was, was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, 
It was blue. Uh oh, stinky. <laughs> this trial is so fucking good. At first, you're like, oh, it's gotta be Genocide Jack. Oh, fuck. Toko is Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack shows up and says, ha ha ha, here's my scissors. I'm a fucking killer. Then we're like, wait a second, Biaki is setting her up. Biaki is doing all this shit, fucking with the body. It's gotta be him. Oh, fuck. Chihiro's a boy. Wait a second. Who else could have gotten to a boy's locker room and known about the track jacket? Oh, fuck. Mondo? Who the fuck's the killer, chat? This is nuts. The only one I told any about, uh, any of this about was to Makoto. Yeah, Mondo, tell us, please. Tell us, come on, bro. Did he? No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Hey, Dwayne, welcome. Cherry. That's such a cute name for Chihiro. Cherry. But why, Chet? Why? And how? see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket back in the bag in a hurry, almost like she was trying to hide it. So when Mondo's like, no, 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 bro, bro, uh, he, he just walked by me and I saw it. No, because... According to Celeste, Chihiro had stuffed the jacket in the bag and zipped it up after Ch uh, Celeste pointed it out. And like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was, was completely, completely stuffed in the, bag. in the bag, dude. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. We gotta prove it, though. We gotta prove it. We gotta, li we gotta give him a chance to talk. Let's, let's let him respond. Mondo's canceled. Well, let's hear him. Let's hear him out. Let's hear his rebuttal. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff. Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. So... That was Kyoko's idea. Kyoko is a fucking kind of a genius. So she's the one who's like, she's the one who brought up the tracksuit and she wanted everybody to talk about the tracksuit so that way she could listen and find anybody's inconsistency with what they were talking about. And luckily for her, Mondo ended up doing that as well and slipping up by saying the name of the color when he should not have known that. That's right. However... Mondo was my target all along. I had suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? What would have made her suspicious? Let's flash back to something that happened last stream. Something that happened last stream, huh? That's a good question. What was it? I hit the wrong thing. a certain turning point, but maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo. But you tend to refer to men and women differently. Oh, wait a second. Mondo talks about men and women very differently. You only call guys, dude. And for so girls, it's chick. chick. But during the investigation, Mondo said, and go back in the other fucking VOD and watch it. During the investigation, go back in the other VOD and watch it. When we talk about Mondo, the very first thing he says is, dude had a real inferiority complex. And prior to that, he always referred to Chihiro as chick. He's like, that chick's crazy, or this chick net. But then he said, the dude had a, had a serious uh, identity complex. After he was killed, he you was happen to refer to him as dude. dude! Ah! It all makes sense. It occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice the I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as, as someone, someone capable of murdering, of murdering a friend. How the fuck could you kill somebody as sweet as Chihiro? 
after Chihiro entrusted you with his secret, wanted to work out with you, wanted to do all this, how could you do it? Why? <laughs> Why, Mondo? Mondo? Was it was really... Was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I... 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 Uh... I didn't kill anyone. Okay. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. He's saying he didn't do it. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. <gasps> yeah, dude, remember him and Taka are bros. Mondo and Taka are bros, dude. Seems we're all out of leads. He sounds so different when he talks like that. Weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Where'd you find Hifumi? Is the day gonna be saved by Hifumi? What kind of world? <laughs> Just tell us, dude. If you really insist, then um, here it is. Huh? What do you have there? It happens to be an e handbook. Oh. I found it laying on the ground, so, so I, I scooped it up. up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Chihiro, right? Okay. 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 Now remember, during the investigation, they were like, we can't find Chihiro's handbook anywhere. Where's Chihiro's handbook? What the fuck could this missing handbook have anything to do with this? How could this prove or disprove Mondo in any way? What the fuck could be on this handbook, chat? Think. I don't know. Well, that's what I was hoping, but it's busted. It won't even turn on. It's busted. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and okay. shock resistant. It would take an awful so they can't be broken, they can't be electrocuted. But how how was Leon's handbook broken? Sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high. How is it that was broken? Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? Tell us, Monokuma. How precisely How chat did the handbooks get broken? You can't break it. You can't smash it. They're very durable. How did the handbooks break? There's only one explanation. By hitting its weak point? Monokuma said all the handbooks have at least a one weakness. What is it? <laughs> it's true. He never said what the weak point of the, the handbooks are. Tell us what it is, Monokuma. Uh, Tell me. us what it is. I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. What is the one way to destroy an e-handbook? But if I tell you and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Very not good. The weak point of my cutting edge e handbook is the high temperatures for too long. It will suffer a meltdown and totally break. 
So as long as you get it really hot, it'll break. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh! <laughs> Remember when Taka and Chihiro, or not Chihiro, Taka and Mondo decided to have that 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 fucking battle in the sauna where they both sit down and see who can last in there longer? The temperature in the sauna can reach Oh shit! Every fucking detail in this game is important. Every detail. It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. That layer of air Yeah, right, duck. Morokuma just giving, just dropping fat sauna advice in the chat, dude. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. Sweet, we learned a new fact. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Hmm. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. How would the culprit have known the weakness? But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery, but it's not. It's not a mystery, because we know somebody who would have accidentally discovered that fact, he don't we? Out by accident. What do you mean by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna? Not knowing the weakness, and then it broke. They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. But we do! We do! I know someone who did. Oh. Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... No. Who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? Now, you guys in chat might be saying, well, Taka did that too. But if you go, if you remember, Taka stripped down. He took his shirt and his pants off, but there was one person who had his clothes on with a handbook in the pocket. Taka was naked, there's no way. There's only one person it could have been. Mondo. Here's my answer. Mondo. Your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Oh, shit. Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. Remember? I remember. I was there, dude. And yeah, look at him. Contest, Mondo just so happened, happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could, could easily, easily destroy, destroy it. it. Oh boy. No, wait, hold up. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I don't want to believe it either, bud. But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Fuck, old man. Oh, shit. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. See? Look! Damn, dude. Taka. Taka, he doesn't want to betray his bro, dude. That's sad, man. Taka doesn't want to, like, betray him. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct... This fucking song is bumping, dude. 
Get all this hip jab out of my face. Or does it? No, that's wrong, Mondo. Your handbook doesn't work fine. Is it really yours? That broken handbook. Remember at the beginning when they're like, oh, we have uh, Sayaka's, Junko's, and Leon's. What if the broken one wasn't actually Leon's? What if the, the E handbook that Mondo has right now is Leon's? And he put his broken one in the box. Is that supposed to mean? I I beat the whole game, J Card. I beat all of Ultra Despair Girls, dude. I know all about that. I know I know everything about Ultra Despair Girls already. I know the whole thing about Ultra Despair Girls. Is it that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. Oh shit, so... If it, Chet, if that's the case, all we have to do is tell Mondo, show us your handbook. Show us your handbook. Alright. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. Because if Mondo has his own handbook, then he's in the clear. But if he actually does have Leon's handbook on him, that, that pretty much confirms that he is the killer. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. Oh no, this is mean, mean, dude. Mean, mean. The hardest difficulty, sorry. The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Damn! So the handbook that wouldn't turn on was Mondo's. Because that's why they're like, well, how the fuck did Leon's break? It wasn't Leon's, it was Mondo's that broke when he was in the sauna. Then he stole Leon's and used it, they kept using it as his own. I liked the last like three hours of it, Shin. The last three hours were bumping. Yeah, I knew, I, I knew all about that. Just. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. Indeed. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're, you're welcome, welcome to, say, to so. say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! Whoa. What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Whoa, Taka ain't handling this wall. Why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear. And oh shit, is it a closing argument? Closing argument, the end of the case. So, one more time from the top, we gotta put this back in chronological order. We have to discover what actually happened from the start. So, we'll have we'll have him say it after we figure out the pieces here. So let's talk to hero in the warehouse with a duffel bag. And I actually don't know. Is this, this track suit one? I'm a little nervous. These kinda these kinda get me nervous. There's something everyone has that you need to get into the locker room. That one's easy, right? Something that everybody has. E handbook. Which locker room did Chihiro go into? Boys. Well, we'll take it all from the top. Don't worry. The weapon the killer used was the dumbbell. As the murder took place, some blood splattered onto something, didn't it? Yeah, a little bit of blood on the uh, big titty anime girl. Sickening. To disguise the truth, the killer switched around the carpet as well as something else. This 
switch the carpet. This is a crazy case. This is a crazy case, Chad. Okay. I don't know which of these images, though. Does this take off? Yeah, this is taking off the poster. Which locker room did the killer move to? Girls locker. All right, then he hung up the new bloody poster onto the wall. Then Biakia discovered the body. What was it that Biakia brought to the murder scene? The extension cord. When Biakia arrived on the scene, what did he use to disguise what had happened? I like how there's the crystal ball from case one. But what did he use to disguise? Oh, wait, was it? No, wait, that's not. Oh, it is. Yeah, he had to put bloodlust on the wall because it's already on the wall here. Where did the killer go after they were done? The sauna? The handbook got thrown to the sauna room. What happened? Hopefully that's right. All right, Chet, y'all ready? Let's cross our fingers. Hopefully I got it right. And let's see the closing argument. The big revelation that's case two. Now, isn't, wasn't this way better than case one? Wasn't this so much better than trial one? People were like, oh fuck, it's Genocide Jack. Oh wait, shit, it's actually Biakia. No, it was actually Mondo. Boom, it's like, you don't know who the fuck the killer's going, what the fuck's going on? Five bucks says I'm wrong. That's not, got, that's not good. It makes me feel like I'm wrong. Fuck. Did I do something wrong? Uh, I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. If we get it wrong, we get it wrong, we'll, we'll do it again. Come on, Makoto, tell us what happened from the beginning. This, this is a crazy murder. This is like 500 IQ. This writing is nuts. I love the revelation. Like, when you see the body, I love this game because, like, when you see the body, your mind is like, what the fuck could have happened? And then by the closing argument, everything is laid out in front of you. From, from the time you discover the body to the closing argument is such a good... Mm. Something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who's apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Fuck, I did fuck it up. What was I supposed to put there instead? God damn it. What was I supposed to go here? There's something everyone has that you need to get into the girls' locker room. Was it just this? Is that all I needed? Here's exactly what happened. What's up, Acid? Wait, that's what I- did I fuck it up again? I fucked it up again? Alright, time out. I got this. I got this. I got this. Did I just switch them? Is that the- is that the issue here? I'm gonna move this down. Uh, that's where I fucked up. Okay. Got it. Ah, uh, there we go. Aha! There we go. We figured it out. Exactly what happened. Okay. I just switched the images. I knew they were both of the of the handbooks. Bag in hand, she, okay. she made her way to the locker room, but how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? There we go. Now nah, we're killing it. Simple. Because she was really a he. Which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Poor Chihiro. 
once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was, was the, the one, one who killed, killed him. him. I fucked that up too? Dude, I fucking suck. Holy shit. How was it? Not the dumbbell. I... These are all the same images. I just didn't know that there wasn't blood on it yet. There... Oh my god, dude. That's so lame. They were both images of dumbbells. I knew what I was talking about. I just picked the wrong picture of the dumbbell. That is lame. How heavy is this game? Fucking heavy. It's about like despair, dude. Look at this fucking cute, innocent, fucking poor boy. Got his head beat in with a, a dumbbell. It's not good. It's not as heavy as the dumbbell that smashed his brain in. The anime, pretty much all Danganronpa fans seem to agree that the Danganronpa 1 anime sucks shit and that it leaves a lot out. It was so bad, in fact, that they never made a Danganronpa 2 anime. They were like, wow, this, this was not good. So they never even made an anime for Danganronpa 2 because it, it leaves out so much shit. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. But the opening's sick. The opening for the Dangarop anime? That's sick. I do love the opening. A boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. I'm glad they made Dangarabba 3. I'd rather have them make a brand new thing. Here we go. layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. A crime scene switch. And then, this is the this is the weird fucking thing, guys. This is the weird part. So, Mondo beats Chihiro in the head, and then Byakuya just finds the body. And he's like, I'm just gonna make it look like Genocide Jack did it. Isn't that fucked up? He just fucked with the, the crime scene for no reason. After stumbling on the crime scene, we gotta interrogate him about that later. He went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then so the killer, it wasn't even the one that hung him up. Byakuya just did that. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible. This is like such a crazy, like complicated, like what happened, man. Oh. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer having all It's just a stylish the stylistic thing. Arrived at the sun. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook. Damn, and then the last thing he did was throw Chihiro's handbook in there so that nobody could uh, see the truth. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that. Yeah, ratings uh, on violence in Japan are more strict than in the US. And they didn't want the game to get the highest level of rating, like gore rating. Oh shit, here we go! Mondo Owada. I love that scene. 
Mondo Owada was the one that killed Chihiro. I told you guys we did, we'd uncover the killer tonight, and we did it. What's he got to say about that, all that evidence? We just spent the past two fucking hours showing the evidence, Taka. It would be kind of tough to see your best friend get sentenced. Evidence that Mondo's the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial. All I have to do is check that one item of his and everything will become clear. This is it. We have to get him we have to get him to show us the handbook he has and it's all over. Oh god, we gotta fucking fight off Taka now? Fuck. Show me some evidence. Last time I perfect did it. See, can I do it again? Show me some evidence. I won't listen. You're corrupt. I refuse to fight. I repeat you. False. You're corrupt. Show me some evidence. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. This should prove it. Boy, I love you, Taka. You my homie, but. Sorry, dude. Your boy Mondo guilty. It's over. Thinking so far is right. Mondo must have replaced his broken hand with Leon's. In which case, we can just check. If we just all pull out our handbooks, who's got Leon's? Once we do that, well, no, that's gonna be the definitive nail in the coffin. We don't gotta do that. What, Nani? Huh? What? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Damn. There we go. The confession. Woo! What a trial, guys. Did you guys like that? How did you guys enjoy the trial? Well, there's a little bit left. We got a couple more minutes. We gotta ask him why. We gotta figure out why he did it. Then we'll end tonight. We have to ask why did this have to happen. All right. Then we'll end. Then we'll end. Bro, bro, what are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the god. For sure. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we got just, just 10, 15 more minutes max that we're done with the stream, I promise. I know it's getting late, some of you guys are getting tired. 10, 15 more minutes to close this up, there's still some twists, bro. There's still some twists, I bet. It's, it ain't over till it's over, ever. Just like with case one. Wait, hold on! No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Cast our votes. Or the, the dreadfully dreadful wrong, wrong one. one. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? And the murderer is. Mondo Wada, the killer. Uh-oh. Looks like this time you got it right again. It is so. The blackened that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was... Mondo Owada. Unbelievable. The vote was not you. Oh shit, this is the fucked up... In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. So even with all that evidence, Taka still refused to vote for him. Damn. Everybody voted for Mondo besides Taka. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I refuse to believe it. 
There, there's no way he would kill someone. Sorry. What is this? Why are you apologizing? What's up, Epic Man? This is this is yeah. Why? Why did you do it? Why? Yeah, Mondo. Did did Mondo really just kill Chihiro brutally, only to be able to get out of the school? Is there really nothing more to it than that? Now then. It looks like Mondo's taking a vow of silence. So allow me to explain on his behalf. So Monokuma's going to explain. Actually. Oh shit. The story of murder this time is the sad story of two men. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't want to hear it, you can hit the circle button to fast forward the text. <laughs> no, 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 this is, we're not going to do that. Here we go. The finale of tonight's stream. Deep breaths, everybody. Hold on. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he, hide, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. So pretty much, so that you guys are asking, like, if Chihiro was, was a boy, why did he so, try so hard to dress like a girl, act like a girl? Why didn't he tell anybody? That's because his entire life, he was literally bullied, treated like shit because he was too weak. People would always be like, if you're a boy, how come you're so weak? How come you, you look like a girl, blah, blah, blah. So in order to avoid the bullying, in order to avoid all the people fucking with him, he just decided to be like, fuck it. He became what they made fun of him for. He just decided that if he dressed like a girl, act like a girl, he wouldn't have to deal with the bullying. He wouldn't have to deal with and accept the fact that he's weaker than everybody else. That's why. It's not that he's a cross-dresser. It, it, it's not that he wanted to be a girl. It's that he, he wanted people to stop picking apart the thing that made him feel insecure. He had chosen that as his way out. Mm. Now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. And weak. Weak, 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 This is just me personally. This is me personally. Absolutely feel free to disagree in, in, in your own life. I will always, always, always refer to Chihiro as a he because people that called him a she is what caused him to be depressed, what caused him to be uh, upset. And as somebody who has dealt with sometimes insecurities or there's things ab about myself that I don't like about myself, I think everybody has something. And I would never ever want to cause somebody to be sad or, or to pick at something that they feel is makes them inferior. That's just, that's just a game theory. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, in this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... That was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. But... I also don't want to leave things the way they are, so maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become a strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger, and I'm going to accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. 
With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day, he made the commitment of uh, to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his body and mind, but sadly, that would be the first and only chance he'd get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it'd be good uh, to ask someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help from there. That person he went to. Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro figured that even if he didn't confide in Imondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. How could you do it, Mondo? Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to be. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That's why Mondo was his exercise partner. Because he looked up to Mondo. Mondo represented something that Chihiro wanted to be. Chihiro felt insecure, weak, and he saw somebody like Mondo and he'd be like, if I was somebody like that, nobody would ever bully me again. If I could be somebody you know, like that. He thought only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. That must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Look at this, this is fucked. Indeed. Mm. So, if you guys don't know what Kyoko just said or what they just discovered, the reason, the whole reason why Mondo took Chihiro's body from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room is because Mondo says, no matter what, I always keep my promises. I always keep a, uh, I always keep my promises. Uh, no, Blabo, they haven't. So, even then, even after killing Chihiro, he promised that he would never let anybody know Chihiro's secret. So he, he carried his body to the girls' locker room to try to co uh, conceal his secret because he didn't want people to find out because he promised. Um, certainly. I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men that he'd made to Chihiro. But... How does moving the body keep his secret? Because... If everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room... And everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room. Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. He tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? The Mondo did all that to keep the promise he made to Chihiro? <laughs> Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you... Why'd you do it, Mondo? Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What, what is this? Nothing could have been that bad. So, Chet, what was Mondo's secret? What secret was Mondo holding so dear to him that he felt it was worth killing Chihiro for? Because Mondo said, no matter what, nobody can fucking know my secret. That was his motive. Monokuma succeeded. Monokuma succeeded in getting Mondo to kill. But what the fuck was Mondo's big secret? Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? It's impossible. <laughs> to judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> While we're on the subject, why don't I tell you that embarrassing memory, the secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You want to know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had a chance to join the gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Mondo's older brother, Daya Owada. 
And here's a little bit of like a JoJo reference, uh, kind of. Now, obviously, this is aside from the story real quick, but this is a, a JoJo reference. Um, the biker gang, they're known as the Crazy Diamonds, which is Josuke's, um, which is Josuke's stand's name. Uh, but there's also a play on words in this as well uh, that goes with it. And if you talk to Mondo, he always talks about how the biker gang is unbreakable. It's, it's unshakable. It's undestroyable. Also, Mondo's name is Mondo. His older brother's name is Daya. Pronounce that in Japanese, you get Diamondo or Diamondo is unbreakable. Diamond. So you have Daya and Mondo to make diamond. It's a Japanese play on words, which is a reference to Jojo Part 4. So there you go. That's why his older brother's name is Daya, and it's 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 a little play on word joke there. Mondo's brother was only his fa his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he uh, imitated him in everything that he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. Before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, younger brother Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy, but when Mondo started to think about how he'd have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over from Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers. So Mondo knew he had, the, he had so much pressure and anxiety from having to one day succeed his brother. And his brother was great. His brother was the best fucking gang, biker gang leader. Everybody loved him. And all he heard was the other motorcycle gang members talk shit about him. They're like... Dude, Daya's younger brother, Mondo, he, he, he's not gonna, he has no skill, he's not, he's got shit, he's gonna be garbage. Which is why, I, I just, I gotta get stronger, stronger than Daya. Once, just one time, no matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenges, challenged him to a street race. During the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, dashed onto oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. So, he challenged his brother to a street race to prove that he was worth succeeding the clan. However, he was reckless. He was crazy. He tried to tried to win the race. Swerved onto oncoming traffic, almost killing him. And Daya knocked him out of the way to save his younger brother. But that's what got him killed. Mondo didn't actually kill his brother, but he was responsible for his brother's death. Because he was so eager to prove himself as a man, he, all he cared about was like, I want to prove myself, I want to prove myself. He put himself in harm's way, and his brother sacrificed himself to save him. So he didn't kill him, but his reckless behavior got his brother killed. He knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a promise between men <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother he could never admit to anyone that he, his own weakness caused the accident and as a result the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his older brother that's how he became the ultimate biker gang leader of Crazy Diamond. Daya was going to lose his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. 
He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kind of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm strong. <clears throat> strong, strong, strong. You guys are. You guys start to see the, the dichotomy between uh, Chihiro and Mondo. Chihiro was somebody who is weak, who said, I'm weak, I'm weak, I gotta become strong. Mondo's the opposite. Mondo is actually weak, but he told himself that he was strong and hid that. The difference is Chihiro accepted his weakness and wanted to become better, where Mondo ignored his weakness and lied and pretended to be strong. And yet, as soon as our killing game began, he realized no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on the secret. Mondo killed his older brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything my brother and I worked so hard to create would have been destroyed. His death, the guilt I'd been carrying around, it would have been for nothing. That's why. I... I... Mondo. After I saw what Mon Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with uh, fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I'd never felt anything like it before. I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety weighed down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, he told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living to myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying that if I what? really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I've never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making fun of me? What? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No. I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear him starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? wrong damn you why did you have to tell me that are you trying to rub my failure in my face I, I just wanted to I just really admire you I admire your strength yeah that's right that's right I am strong I'm strong stronger than you you son of a bitch and stronger than Daya I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was just laying at my feet covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand and was just staring at him down on the ground. So that's fucked up, chat. That's, that's the truth of what happened. Mondo was so jealous of Chihiro being weak and, and willing to change. And he, it made him feel insecure. He was like, how the fuck is this kid? Who, who's so much weaker than me, even he is able to be, he's able to have more resolve, more strength. And I can't? Is he making fun of me? Is he saying that I, I'm weak? He's like, I'm not fucking weak. Fuck this guy. And he, he blacked out and just beat him. He beat him to death. And 
And that's the truth. Second. I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. That's fucked up, man, but like, again, no excuses. You killed Chihiro, that's fucked up. He he trusted you, he believed in you, and you, you killed him. That's fucked up. But at the same time, I, I, I'm not going to say I feel bad for Mondo, but I can, not sympathize, but I can empathize with Mondo. Because you can tell that he regrets it. Again, if he was not put in this fucked up situation that Monokuma's forcing on them, things would not have played out this way. He hid that weak side from everyone. That was a secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it. Monokuma thinks this is hilarious. Look at him, you see? You're all just like him. For a secret from the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. He couldn't cut free from his regrets on the outside world. He didn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Because I sure don't. Poor Taka, dude. That was like his best friend. Imagine seeing your best friend, like, actually kill a guy and you didn't even know. Yep. I'll say it as many times as I want, is what I want to say, but... <laughs> unfortunately, I can't do that right now, because the time for punishing is fast approaching. Well, here we go, chat. The moment some of you guys have been waiting for... This is the thing about Danganronpa, guys. When, when, when you find the body, you get so riled up and you want to find the killer and put him to death. You always want to be like, who's the killer? Fuck them. Revenge, revenge, revenge. But then when you actually find out what happens, suddenly the, 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 the death, the penalty, the punishment, sentencing them to death isn't as sweet. You know? You have this bitter, sweet feeling in your heart and you don't feel any better from sentencing the person to death. Ma Taka's gonna have to be forced to watch Mondo die. I've prepared a very special punishment for Mondo Awada, the ultimate biker gang leader. Wait, wait. This is it, chat. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. That. I'm glad you like the shirt, Acid. I am so hungry, Chet. Once this is done, I gotta get some food. Me too, probably. Okay. The Cage of Death. Damn, Chet. Now... I will say this. This is the dumbest. Yeah. You have the same controller? Do you have the berry blue one? I love my berry blue controller. Sorry. Shouldn't be talking over this serious moment. It's been a long stream. Mondo Butter. So I don't really know why they do like a slapstick thing like that. But if you want to know what happened, the he was forced to go around in a bike 
and the centripetal force actually like caused his organs to liquefy. So it's not actually as humorous as it seems. They they spun him around so fast that his his organs and bones fucking kind of liquefied. So it's not good. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. Damn, dude. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Dude, poor Taka, dude. Nobody made out, man. This was a bad day. <laughs> this was a bad fucking day. I mean, uh, Chihiro got killed. Mondo got executed. Taka's fucking emotionally, mentally fucked. Things are really bad. Despair is spreading. As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, had to. <laughs> what a disappointment. This is the end of the game. There is one more plot twist, chat. This is it. Many twists tonight. What is this? Completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that However. I just don't understand why. Why did Byakuya fuck with the case? That's the thing. Mondo's already dead. We found the killer and executed him, but we still don't know. Why the fuck did Byakuya find the body and fuck with it? Why did he tie it up? Why did he make it look like it was Genocide Jack? Why? He had no reason. Why would he make it intentionally more confusing to solve this murder? Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. Last night when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule too? <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You actually... So... That's... Everything we fucking did was pointless. That's the last twist. That's the last plot twist. This entire trial was pointless. Mondo... Or, or Byakuya actually witnessed the murder. He saw fucking... He saw Mondo walk out. He had everything. But he didn't want to say it because he wanted things to be more interesting. He thought that if he saw the eyewitness, if he talked about the eyewitness report, it'd be too boring. It'd be over too fast. He purely did it because he wanted it to be more interesting. The entire trial was pointless. All of the evidence was pointless. Nothing mattered because there was an eyewitness to the murder. That is as much evidence as you need. So he knew the whole time. The entire time he knew exactly. That's why when we were accusing him, he was calm and collected. That's why when we were like... Biaki, you, you did it because of this, because of this. He was always calm. He was cool, collected. He, he was never stressed out because he knew because he witnessed the murder. Well. You're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. Did all that to liven things up? I see. But after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene. Blood. But damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who really done it, you'd have been dead too. <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. <laughs> of course. Byakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Interesting. Once I decide to become the Blackened, now I know who I have to look out for. So the last thing Byakuya says is, now when, I, when it's my turn to, to kill somebody, 
I know who to look out for. What? Correct. <laughs> He's satisfied. Indeed. We're done listening to your story. Moving on. Okay. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next. You. You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, right? My question is why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope into despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean. 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 Mean, 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 mean. Good grief. I don't understand why you have to pick apart every stupid little thing. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and everything will be revealed to me. The noble son of a noble family, truly you understand me. I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I've achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm gonna find you and kill you, understand? So Byakuya says, fuck this. Once I win this game, I'm killing you next, Monokuma. In the name of my family. You're getting all riled up. Whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper, sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue. Because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell and had more... It felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Oh, shit. This is it. This is it. This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Who the fuck is Monokuma talking to, Chet? Who the fuck is that? Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of, of making you part, part of, of the group. You couldn't play your part. I went to all the effort of making you part of the group and you couldn't play your part. Making you part of the group. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? You were supposed to be the one to make the first move. Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? Oh shit. After all, that's, that's what, what everyone, everyone wants, wants to see. see. Who is that? There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. My, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see... That's, that's my, my ace, ace in the, in the hole. hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> Chapter 2, Boy's Life of Despair. The end. How many people? 
10 people are still alive. To be continued. And that's the end of the stream tonight, everybody. Let's fucking save, because I didn't save the whole damn game. And we got the crazy diamond prison. Save, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That brings this stream to a close. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, what would you guys think? How was the was the trial crazy? What about who was Monokuma talking to? What 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 did they mean? Who is the sixteenth student? Remember back in case one, they asked Monokuma, if there's fifteen of us, why is there a spot for a sixteenth person? What does that mean? Why is Monokuma doing this? Who will be the next to die? Who will be the next killer? All of this to be revealed and more. Uh, Wednesday. We're going to stream more Wednesday. So we're going to play some games. Come to the stream. We're going to pick up right here. And um, let me fucking tell you. Uh, Case 3 is one of my favorites. F from the from the moment the, the Danganronpa stream starts. It's going to get nuts. From like the fucking moment. Alright. So literally either tomorrow or Wednesday. I'll let you guys know. Um, the, 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 don't. If you guys like. Oh, now there's going to be downtime, then it's going to get crazy again, then downtime, then crazy again. No, from the moment we start, it's nuts. The downtime is capiche. You guys are going to see shit that's going to fucking blow your mind within five minutes of the next stream. Within like five, ten minutes of the next stream, just crazy shit. So, uh, enjoy the despair and enjoy the streams. Thank you guys so much for this awesome time. Hope you liked the trial. This playthrough will be up live on Twitch or live on Twitch in a few hours in like an hour and then it'll be live on YouTube in a couple days. So, have a great night. Join the Discord if you haven't. Talk more about Dong and Rampa, talk about other anime. Just pop in and share a meme or two. Um, but have a great night. You guys are always amazing and uh, streaming Dong and Rampa is fucking kick ass. So, let me get the Credit set up and uh, there we go. Have a good night and don't let the despair take hold of you. <laughs>